just my mic. Sorry. There we go. Hey, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing there. I can't sing. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a Thursday evening stream here. It is extraordinarily hot in Northern California right now. It's about 101 or 2 degrees. So I've got a glass of water nearby, which I'm going to take a drink from right now because it's hot. Oh, man. I don't drink a lot of water, to be honest, which I know isn't. Actually, I don't know. I, I hear conflicting things on that. There are people who say, oh, you should drink, what is it, eight glasses of water a day. And blah, blah, blah. And then I also see things from people who say, that, that seem like respected whatevers, that say, well, you should drink when you're thirsty. That's your body telling you you need water. Because, you know, when it's not hot, or when I don't eat a very salty meal or food item, I could, I, in the morning, generally drink a, about 16 ounces to 32 ounces of coffee, depending. And then honestly, on a day where the temperature is not outrageous, or again, that I haven't eaten something high in sodium, I can go pretty much most of the day and not drink anything. And I'm not thirsty. It's not some kind of thing where I'm intentionally not drinking water. I'm just never thirsty. I don't think about it. In fact, my wife got me a water bottle that has times on it. That's the only reason most days, obviously summer's going to be a little different, especially if a lot of it is like today. Otherwise, I wouldn't even think to drink water. Wouldn't even occur to me to drink any water. But I look at the bottle and I see the time and I make sure I drink that amount by that time. And that's the only reason. And honestly, just, just to be completely transparent about it, I haven't noticed anything different about myself from drinking water compared to when I didn't. Now, don't get me wrong. Maybe there is something I don't, you know, not everything health wise is obvious, but certainly none of my physicals or blood work or anything have turned up some kind of unusual condition from not drinking water. I'm not against drinking water either. This is, this is my point is it's not some kind of conscious decision. It's simply that I don't think about drinking water. It's, it's, it's a weird thing, I guess, but it's just, you know, but today, no, today I'm drinking a lot of water. I've drawn, I've probably had, I've had a lot of water today, although I did spend a lot of time out in the heat today too. So I'll be honest, this stream will probably be on the shorter side because I, I'm pretty wiped out because I had to do, uh, I mean, I, I lucked out. I did most of the stuff I had to do in the morning before the heat really kicked in, but I was on my feet for, I'm going to say a good three to three and a half hours, you know, constantly moving and doing stuff and, and doing work. And so I, I was blown out pretty early in the day, I have to admit. So I'm not necessarily sure this is going to be a tremendously long stream, but I want to do it anyway, because it is a nice unwinding type of thing. It's, it's relaxing. And, uh, and also in this room, I'm far closer to a large fan than I am in the, what you would call, I guess the entertainment room or the living room. I don't know what the rooms are called anymore. The main room where the biggest TV is, whatever that is, that room also tends to have a large window, which faces the sun and the sun, you know, is, is definitely driving more heat into that room. So the combination of having the TV on and the sun, it, it's warmer in there. So I'm actually cooler in here anyhow. So this is a number of reasons why this is a thing that I felt like doing, even if I'm not necessarily at 100%, which I'm definitely not. But uh, regardless, whatever, um, we're, there's not a lot of work left on the on the the hand anyway, the, the rip disc, we're pretty close to being done with that. Um, so that's, that may be my goal is simply to, to get that done. And then, uh, that'll be it. So I, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and start our magical little countdown now. So let's go to our starting soon little graphic. Here we go at the five minute mark. There we are. 
Not that there's anybody apparently watching yet anyway. So this has largely been me talking to the air. But that's okay, because people watch you say, oh, see that? The minute I say that, the minute I said that there were no viewers, somebody shows up. So that's why, you know. It's like that. It always is. You say, oh, you know, nobody's going to show up. Somebody shows up. You say, oh, I expect a bunch of people. And that's when nobody will show up. So in any event, it doesn't really matter. The numbers don't mean anything. It's the only thing I happened to notice because I was looking at the timer that there's a little one instead of a zero. Otherwise, I might not even have noted it. So welcome to whoever and however many show up. But yes, I may take frequent uh, water breaks during this because it is just ridiculously hot. So... I, and as I've said, in, I believe previous streams, probably more than once, I can't stand the heat. So definitely going to keep myself hydrated. So yeah, this is, we're pretty far along in the actual, I got to figure out what I want to do with the in-between stuff here with the bones. The skin parts, I don't think I'm going to do anything with. The skin stuff is okay. I don't mind that. But this, this red area, I think, deserves some line work similar to what I did here with those lines although you know I, I look at those lines now i don't really like that color so i might actually use the darker color there because i don't know that doesn't really look like actually you know what the problem is it's not the color the color is not the issue the issue is hey those aren't bone lines but that's that's a that's a semantic problem the issue is there's no diversity in the line work there's nothing to indicate anything other than just basic lines so what we need to do is make these look a little bit more like muscles that was my issue so we're going to go ahead and wipe those out we're going to go ahead and get a new black pen here check our line we want to make our line weight very small for this so we're going to go down to three that looks good and we're going to get nice curved lines in there because that's the problem is they were just kind of very stiff almost fence post or you know yeah fence fence yeah fence like Picket fence, that's what's going on. Fence, uh, picket fence lines. So very boring. So we're gonna do some curvature on those lines. So we're gonna do, and then we're gonna also bury their direction. I don't know if this is accurate to the musculature of the hand. This is one of those areas where you go, who cares? Realism is not necessarily what fits for this. Let's go ahead and create a new layer for this. Just because, why not? And we'll do something like this. So we'll just do some, you know, and I'm not gonna worry about making them too even because muscle has variation. So I'm really not gonna worry about that, but we're gonna curve them out, okay? So there we go, and that sort of fits with the way the hand goes anyway. But then, and this is what's gonna give it the interesting, yeah, in, in te, I, my intent is to make it interesting. Whether it's interesting or not is up to you as the viewer. Let's do another layer here, and this time we're gonna do sideways lines. So we'll give this, the, so they branch off. We'll do something like this. So see, we're just doing something like that. And I'm not going to worry too much about making those lines line up, obviously. But yeah, that, that I think is better. So let's just erase the stuff we don't need. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't really enjoy the way those other lines were. They just looked very dull and standard. And they also looked way too similar to the hatch marks that I'm using for the... Oh, oh no, that's, that's normal. That's fine. To, uh, they look too similar to these, these little lines here. And that's a problem. You can't you can't have it all look the same. If it all looks the same, you don't have the idea that there's any difference in texture or, you know, what what the actual object is. So that that had to go. So there we've got. See that that right away is way more interesting. Just in, in by the virtue of being different, it's better. So we'll go ahead and get rid of these in between lines because these are supposed to be muscle lines. So we obviously wouldn't have that there. I still may change the color, but I don't mind the color now as much as I did before because now the lines are more interesting. So see right there, that's that's better. Just just varying the line direction in terms of the curve and the fact that there's two different ones right there. Don't have to really do anything else. So now I'm gonna go ahead and knock those lines down though because they are basically now the same. Okay, now let's get into what's gonna be going on in here. And I think I'm gonna do something similar where I'm not going for realism here. I'm going for what is interesting to look at. So let me, I'm gonna get another drink of water. Apologize, give me a second here, because it's just hot, it's hot. So, water. Oh man, I will say this. 
and this is not necessarily a vote for heat because I hate heat but it is an indisputable fact that when you're dehydrated or at least very warm nothing makes cold water taste better than being overheated oh just fantastic okay anyway we're gonna go ahead and do similar lines here but we're gonna just have them gonna go all over, all over the place where not all over the place and they're not gonna be wacky or anything but i'm gonna use i'm not gonna really worry about whether this anatomically makes sense this is more of a well, what do i want it to feel like type of thing just give it a little bit of variation so i'm not gonna worry if the lines are you know consistent or not i do want to give them a little bit of a curve to indicate that there's some kind of organic component to them i mean don't get me wrong they're inside of a hand but if you just have oh geez man I, that line is getting really crooked at the end there we go i don't know but if everything is straight nature doesn't generally have a lot of straight lines especially in a, in a body part you're not going to see a lot of really straight lines generally there are of course exceptions so yeah i'm just doing a little bit of curvature here just a little i don't i'm not going to go overboard with, oh, don't wait too far with that one i'm not going to worry about going too far with it but i want them to feel like they have a little bit of a, a ripple to them i guess and then the central one i'm going to go the opposite way where instead of curving i guess downward a downward or a lower arc i'm going to do more of an upper arc now these i'm going to go outside of the boundaries because i want to get that arc in the middle so this one i am kind of more oops not like that though ah come on i gotta pay attention with this a little more sorry just bear with me because doing doing lines like this that are without any type of guide and having them be close is kind of trial and error or at least it is for me i don't mind if they're a little off but i don't want them to be geez that's a weird curve i don't want them to be drastic ah. yeah let's make uh, you know what let's do this let's well, actually i don't mind if they get wider but they need to be consistently wider here we go that's better that's i can live with that that's okay um what? i missed a little piece of color there huh let me just fix that color because that's gonna bug me is that the red it must be yeah the red didn't make it let's just go ahead no sample thank you fix that okay let's jump back to this layer yes and let's go back to black okay so we'll just finish our arcing lines here again not too worried about the consistency on that oh i think that's fine that's fine i have no problems with that that is I'm, I'm, and we're gonna have one more set of detail lines in this thing but this is now this is going to be the under or the lower arc again because this is this side so i want to have a slight under arcing to it nothing drastic not worried about you know this is this is not a perfection thing man really i can't believe some of these colors well i mean i guess i shouldn't say that it's it's that's the best way to troubleshoot that is to look for that look for the little okay you know when you're filling stuff in sorry if i'm too far from the mic by the way because i know i know my head's down so i'm trying to let me lower the mic down a little bit because I'm, I'm definitely lowering my head more than usual um because i'm doing this type of stuff where i'm looking close okay uh i think we're okay now oh no no we're certainly not look at that see all this stuff that you notice hard to notice it when the other colors on top of it but you see it real clearly when you take the color away uh, I, I was just about to say i think we're okay now but uh, that's it yeah that was a stupid thing to even think because if you found one problem you're going to find others uh but that may have been the worst of it oh um no that's okay that part's okay all right let's go ahead and restore the rest of our colors pink or that color anyway all right let's get back to our we're on our detail layer good let's go back to black again we had my voice crack a little bit. All right, back to eraser. All right, let's see here. Folk, the voice is such a weird thing, isn't it? When you step back and think about the fact that what we consider to be language is just 
vibrations of air on a muscle inside of your neck. Crazy stuff. I get, I get caught up in weird contemplations of the fact of trying to understand things that honestly are best considered as an abstraction or not a, you know, like trying to think of large numbers. I'm trying to think of a million dollars and, and picture that in your mind and feel yourself slowly go insane. Both from the fact that it's very difficult to picture something like that, at least it is for me. I have no doubt there are people who can do it. And also from the fact that the chances of me ever seeing a million dollars are pretty much none. So, you know, a couple reasons why it's not necessarily the healthiest thing to picture. Okay, so we've got our whatever we're calling those. I don't want to call them muscle lines. That's That would be incorrect. These are not really meant to represent muscle. Hmm. I'm having a thought. You know what I want to do? I know what I want to do. I'm going to take this color and I'm going to go just slightly. Actually, here's what we're doing. This is the better way. Where is this black or uh, not black, but red. Okay. There's that red. Let's go ahead and paint a little bit of that right there. Let's go into our brightness adjustment. Let's knock that down by five percent there we go perfect let's sample that color okay and then we'll bring this back oh yeah yeah yeah. i'm gonna make this a nice deep it's gonna be a deep inset of whatever actually let me leave it on the let me put it on five five five's good just kind of like an in you know like a, a an inseam of of you know more gristle whatever you want to call that just to kind of pop it a little bit you know not not anything that's going to be make or break for the piece as a whole but just little bits of you know shredded interior skin or discoloration from maybe and i know dry blood is is brown it's not red like this but whatever it's an illustration we don't care we're not going for literalism here yeah, there we go. Just just a way to add a little bit of depth to it. Nothing, again, nothing drastic. Something that probably if I didn't do it, nobody would really care. It's not going to really, again, make or break the piece. But it's, you know, I, I like having a little bit of, I, I like stuff being simple. I'm obviously, and you could sort of tell this, I, I don't do a lot of, what's the word for it? I don't mind simple colors i don't mind simple detail and you know like big broad stroke lines and stuff like that but I, you know i also don't want to just be i don't want something to come off as boring i guess i would say and I, not that i'm necessarily would say that this is boring without this color but it adds a little bit of something to it you know it, it gives a little bit and i'm going to turn this off so it's easier for me to see if i and i'll turn the background back on so that i can see if i miss anything so that I don't have to discover it the way I just discovered that other stuff later. So we'll just put this in here. Sorry, I just hit the desk. Don't know if the mic picked that up, but if it did and it was annoying, sorry. Okay, so, and this'll probably be the end of the color work because I don't go too crazy with colors because I'm not good with colors, honestly, I'm really not. I look at people who do even very simple color stuff and I can't ever figure out why I can't do it. It's not that I haven't tried. I've messed around with stuff, but I'm telling you, I just, I can't get color the way that some people can. And it's not a visual thing. It's not a perception thing. I'm not colorblind or anything like that. My color perception, you know, is as far as I'm aware and from everything that my optometrist correct i think yeah optometrist has told me i have no outside of the fact that my actual vision is awful but there is no problem with color perception or anything like that so it's not a it's not that i'm not seeing things and the other thing is i can perceive the colors that others make so it's not as if everything looks the same to me um so i don't know what it is i really i really don't know what it is and it's and and what I think makes it makes it worse than it would be ordinarily is that I don't how do I put this this is a strange thing to try to describe as opposed to knowing it from seeing it I don't want 
colors that I would utilize to be a standard way of utilizing color. And I don't really know other any other way to put it like that, but you know, the, the standard way that shading is generally done and how shading works in most illustrations, don't get me wrong, the skill is fantastic. I can admire it, but I, I don't have any interest in that for my work. I like some of these simultaneously very bold, but also pastel-y colors. I don't know if you've picked that up from seeing this stuff, but I, I, but even here, I don't, there's something that some artists can do and I don't, and I know they're doing it digitally. So it's not a medium issue. It's not because they're painting or because they're using colored pencils, you know, cause there are those artists who can uh, create certain types of effects, colors, textures because of the medium that they're using. So it's not that because, you know, if it was that, it'd be easy to figure out. Okay. I can't, you know, and even if it was something like that, I could probably easily replicate the medium in, in an app like this. I mean, there's certainly different brushes, there's pencils, all that stuff. So I could do if it was that, it, that would be something that I believe I could actually manage. If it was simply a, a question of using the right medium, it's not that it's something about being able to create certain colors because certain artists can do it. And I see it all the time where they get these really interesting, again, they're bold, but they're also earth tony, pastel-y kind of colors. I, and I don't, I have no way to, I mean, I could show you examples, but I'd have to go search for them, it'll take forever. But if I showed you an example, I could say, here, this is what I mean. But in terms of the actual process and how that color type is achieved or whatever. I have no way to know. I have no frame of reference for figuring out how to describe that or to be able to do it. I just know it when I see it and I'm insanely jealous of it because I'm just like, I not for lack of trying. I just can't figure it out. And I don't, I, I think it has to be something about the way my brain works is I just can't get it that way this is not really a complaint necessarily. I'm not, you know, it's, it's, I can live without it. It's just kind of weird because I know it's a, I don't have a better term for it. It's a, it's a sort of blind spot in the way that I perceive things. But again, I know it's not at least, you know, cause I've asked and they, they've done testing and stuff like that. Cause I was curious, you know, I was like, maybe something, cause I, I know my, my actual eyesight as far as I mean, I could barely see past my elbow, barely. You know, I, I, I honestly couldn't, everything just blurs. So I know my eyes are certainly not 2020. And I figured, well, maybe there's more to it than that. Maybe this is actually, you know, there's, there's more wrong with my eyes than even I'm aware of. It's not that they, they did all these different tests, you know, and do all the color things and then these different swatches you look at to see if, you know, you're showing signs of, cause I, can't remember, but there's multiple versions of color blindness. It's not that you just can't see color. There's actually different levels and different things that you can perceive and not perceive. And nothing came up. There was, there was nothing there that showed evidence of any type of actual, uh, physical color perception issue. Okay. See, those things are small, these, these dark areas, but I like them. They're good. Um, so I don't know. Like I said, I just, I admire people who can do it because there are a lot of people who can do it and I see it and I'm like, Oh, that's, that's really nice color use. I can't do it. Can't get anywhere close to it. All right, here we go. So now let's get to our layer 50. No, not lifting. Uh, let's not do layer 54. Let's do a one more layer. And this will be basically our miscellaneous detail layer. This is just going to be the final kind of pass at putting stuff in here. And this is just going to be, oh, that was a mistake. I hit that with my finger. Just stuff like this little accent lines. You know, might do things like this, but not necessarily with any particular plan in place. Just a whatever kind of looks good to me. Do a little, oh, that thing just dropped out, but I saw it right away, so we're good. Let me, I, well, the CPU just spiked, so it's gotta it's gotta be related to the CPU utilization. It has to be, because I noticed that the CPU just hit 100. percent I don't know what else it could be, but whatever. I'll reconnect it. Okay, there we go. Let's get back to here. Give that a minute and there we are. I just strange, strange. Anyway, so I think that last line was because I was talking. So I don't, there we go. So we'll do a little bit of kind of framing of that. 
All right, let's do some more lines. And this is really just because I don't like a lot of empty space. There's not much. There's not much else in terms of planning that's happening here. It's just texture building. You know, just and obviously, you know, dead skin will have little pockmark type stuff. So, you know, you want to kind of ripple it a little bit and make it look a little ugly, even though you don't want it to be ugly. To you only want it to be so ugly, but you don't want it to be too ugly. You know what I mean? Because you kind of, you know. I mean, there is there is such a thing as anti. Uh, what are they? I don't remember what the name for it is. There's a type of artwork that is meant to repel the viewer. That's not the kind of artwork I do. I I don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here trying to make Care Bears or anything like that. It doesn't have to be completely subservient to the audience. But at the same time, I don't I don't. There's definitely artwork that challenges the viewer. I have no issue with that. Then there's artwork that's actively hostile towards the viewer. And I'm not saying it shouldn't exist or anything like that. I'm not that kind of snob or, you know, I, I, I absolutely do believe, like with so many things, that you have to tolerate things you don't like because that's, the, that's where the diversity comes from. And that's interesting ideas can come from things that you actively dislike. It's there are many times... I have actually had an idea based on seeing something that somebody else created that I did not like at all. And I went, you know what? Wait a minute, though. I have an idea for something, and I can blah, 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 blah. Okay, where is that layer? Yep, it's right there. So i got to erase that a little bit. There we go. Let's go back to this layer. No, 56. So I don't have any problem with that, but that's not really what I do. I try to make things... I honestly, I think my... A lot of my artwork is driven by the idea of I'd like to see it on a t-shirt or a coffee mug. I love good coffee mugs. I really do. I've made so many. I, at one point, had so many friggin' coffee mugs. Just embarrassingly stupid amount of coffee mugs. And I finally just started giving them away to people. And they were just ones that I'd made on Zazzle or other sites because I felt like making them. Which is not a bad reason to do something. You know, it was it was fun to do. What is that? Where is that from? You see that little scratch mark there? Not scratch mark, but there's something there. What is that? Where did that come from? Now, it's got to be one of these. Hold on. Just bear with me. Uh, where? Aha. Got it. Let's go to the layer mask. We'll just mask that out. There we go. I knew it was somewhere in there. I could tell from where it was. Anyway, so yeah, that, that's a lot of my artwork stuff. I mean, sometimes I'll have actual kind of ideas like this, this, this type of piece, the rip disc piece and the, the dead media are sort of a fusing of those two things where I had this, the concept sort of grew out of an image that I had made for something else. Then I thought, you know what? We kind of need to do variations of it, put them on t-shirts. You know, why not? And that's really where this stuff came from. And a lot of my stuff is just kind of stuff that I would that I would like to see on a t-shirt. I and and I actually did the image I did of comedian and I'm gonna I I know I'm not gonna get his last name. Jason Manzukis. I think I actually got it right that time. That that's one of the few shirts of my own artwork that I actually own, because I really like that image. Um and then the one I did of Len Kabazinski, which I, you know, was based on a, a photograph of him. And I really like that one. And then like the, the Burbank Kung Fu Club, which also partially has to be credited to Len because that the movie Raw Force is one that he talked about when he appeared on one of his best of the worst uh, episodes. And he had said, oh, somebody make the bung, the, the bung fu, the bung fu Kerbank Club. That's where I was going with that, because that's English, everybody. And there's my mastery of it, or lack thereof. The Burbank Kung Fu Club was something that he said, oh, there has to be a shirt of that. And I looked around, because, you know, I wasn't going to re, I wasn't going to make something if somebody did a really good version of it. I don't do that either. There's... There's a couple of artists who get a lot of publicity. I will not name names because I don't want to be a scumbag. I ain't a rat. But there are some artists who have ripped off much more prominent artists who were around way before they were and have made a pop culture success out of it. 
and it never stops bugging me. Which is not to say, because I want to be very careful here that I don't mix my messages. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with taking inspiration. I've talked about the fact that the stuff that I do is very clearly influenced from certain comic book artists, and it's not hard to see it. But it's not copying their style. There's a couple of these people, and you would know them because their stuff gets, it gets enough prominence that it bothers me. If they did this stuff in obscurity and nobody ever noticed, I wouldn't care. But the, the reality is there is there is a real problem in terms of art literacy in this country and probably in the world where people aren't aware of where certain stuff... They don't know the difference between somebody who's doing something original and somebody who's clearly ripping off another artist. And that bugs me. It bugs me. Because it's hard enough to actually be successful at this type of thing. And then to have somebody else just come along and take your stuff. And it's not as if there's a real active, cause I've kind of looked into it a little bit. Cause I, you know, I don't want to be one of these people who just seeks out whatever internet drama or whatever they call it now, whether there's some term for it. So I'm not looking to start a fight with somebody on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. You know what? I, I, I life's too short for that kind of garbage, but, I have kind of been like, okay, did this person at least tacitly acknowledge what was going on that they were, that they were clearly riffing on this? And they really haven't, you know, they kind of do if somebody asks them about it. Cause I've read some of the interviews and somebody says, Oh, your style is definitely, you know, you're, 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 you're go coming from this type of art style, this person. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's obviously, yes. Yeah, it's an homage. There's a cover term. If you ever heard one, it's an homage to this person. One of the, in fact, one of them, I have a print of the actual famous artist hanging about 12 feet from me. Oh, beautiful, beautiful print. Just ugh, fantastic work. So, yeah, I'm a little bit more miffed about that than maybe some of the others because I'm just, you know what, man, like I said, it, it, this stuff is not easy to begin with. A lot of this comes down to, I mean, now it's not so much luck, unfortunately, for some it's very, some artists' success is clearly architected and mo marketed, which I don't necessarily in itself have a problem with either. That's that's part of building a brand and all that type of thing. But sometimes you can tell that it, it's, it's more of a, what's the right way to put it? More of a product of a hype machine than it is actual talent. That still bothers me a little bit. But, you know, again, not, not enough that I'm going to go and try to start a hate crusade against somebody. Like, fine. But um, where the hell was I going with this? I started this rant from somewhere. I don't even know where I was going with it. Where, where was I going with it? I was saying something about the T-shirt. I, I got lost in my own. Got lost in my own meandering thoughts. What a non-surprise that is. Uh, it's, it's sort of amazing I have enough brain power to be able to talk and make marks like this at the same time I'm sort of astonished I'm doing so well at it because you can tell I can barely hold a coherent thought together but yeah that's a lot of my stuff comes from t-shirt designs oh the Burbank Kung Fu Club that's where it came from because I had said that I, I, I thought of making it I thought of a design but and here's something I don't know that a lot of people do I did a bit a, a bunch of searching to make sure that nobody else had done even something similar to this design, because again, I didn't want it to come off. I mean, honestly, if somebody had done it well enough, I would have just bought their shirt because I'm, I'm happy supporting people who make good stuff. But I didn't want to just do that because then, then I'm like one of these people where it's, you know, let's say that some artist who had almost no following had made a really great design. Okay. My default position to that is to then try to get that person's exposure up through the meager means I have. That's somebody where I would then, if that shirt had existed, I would have gone to Len and sent him a message and said, Hey Len, you know, the shirt you were, look at this shirt this guy made or woman, whoever this person made. And I would have done that as opposed to, well, this person's an unknown and I know there's a market for this stuff. So why don't I just make my own? Ha 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 ha. Screw that person type of thing. And that's what it feels like some of these other individuals are doing. 
<laughs> hey, 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 Mikey Mendoza, what's happening, buddy? How you doing, man? Has this been you the whole time sitting here as the one viewer? And you're just waving now? Is that a wave hello or goodbye? I don't know anything about emojis. Sorry, what do I know? I don't know nothing. So I, I don't know. I don't I don't know if that's a hello or a goodbye. Uh yeah. I Mike, what do I know? I don't know anything, man. I know nothing. So I, I mean this has got to be one of the most meandering, pointless streams that anybody could ever hope to watch or not hope. <laughs> Accidentally have started watching, I guess. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to be one of those people. Actually, oh, okay, now I'm disregarding. Yeah, okay, I'm going to take those as hello, hello, hello. Three hellos. Thank you for three hellos. Mike knows what I'm talking about because Mike... For those who may be watching this later and may not be aware, Mike Mendoza, who goes by the... You're still Modern Night, right? That hasn't changed, has it? Because you changed that a while ago, but I think it's still Modern Night as far as I know. Right? I'll wait for him to answer. I'm pretty sure it is. I don't think he's changed his artist name again. But Mike knows what this is like because Mike is a, a big proponent of the synthwave genre. I don't... Well, that's black and white. So black and white face. I Yeah, that's my ability with color. You just nailed it. Monochrome. And within that genre, there are many people who do work that, you know, there's, there's a line between derivative and inspired. It's, that's, that's the biggest difference is it's, it's fine to be inspired by something and you can do something in the style of and most of us can tell when it's in the style of meaning that you took that as a starting off point and in the style of means I'm just going to rip off, you know, most of what you did and insert one or two notes, the classic vanilla ice under pressure example. <laughs> what a doofus with that explanation. If you've never seen the vanilla ice, try to explain how ice ice baby is not a rip off of under pressure. You should really go look at it because it's amazing. The, the level of, stupidity that he assumes that the audience must ha must have to buy his explanation for that difference is well it's something I, I don't know what it is but it's something so that's what i'm saying is there you can you can have a an artist that is meaningful to you and it's a starting point and you realize oh you know this person you can use it as a building block and i don't think there's anything wrong with that I really don't. I mean, it is very rare for somebody to internally generate an entire style. It's usually something where you are not copying, but starting from something familiar, if that's a better way to put it, and then building on top of it and trying, ideally, to expand it, or at least expand your version of it. And that, I think, is what... That's fine. That I don't have any issue with. It's the copying and it's, and it's the, the blatant copying and pretending it's something original when it's so obvious it isn't, please. Come on, that may work on the roofs. It's not gonna work for long, especially not anymore. Not with the internet and the way people will hunt you down if you do something they don't like. I mean, fandom, fandom has some wild things it gets crazy about and ripping things off is one of them. There was, there was just a, what do you call it? The pink cat lady or whatever that, I mean, don't get me wrong. I barely understand most of that controversy, but I do understand plagiarism or tracing in this case and tracing in a lazy way, a lazy way. If you at least put effort into your ripoff, maybe that shields you a little, although probably not, but this person's ripoff was so lazy and, and so obvious. I mean, geez. If that's all you got, did you really think you were going to get that far? I guess they must have. Because, they, I mean, they, apparently that person has now disappeared from the internet. And, and the supporters of, of the movement. What movement? I, whatever. I, I don't want to... I don't want to get caught up in people are stupid. But sometimes people are awfully gullible. I'll put it like that. I'll, put, I'll use the generous term awfully gullible that they bought into this person's movement which was nothing it was nothing it was a scam from from the jump and they went in on this thing and spent money 
NFTs are scams, everyone. I'm sorry, but they're scams. They're all scams. Don't get me wrong. I think crypto is mostly cryptocurrency, not cryptography. Cryptography is great, but cryptocurrency is mostly a scam as well. But I think there are people with good intentions in there. The NFT thing, post the picture in the discard. I will. Thanks, Mike. Hey, thanks for stopping by, man. Have a good sleep. Good night. I know it's uh, late where you are. So thanks for stopping by, man. I appreciate it. I'm listening to me vent about NFTs because that's what everybody wants to hear me talking about because I hate them. But yeah, NFTs are a scam, everyone. Don't, don't buy into NFTs. Don't do it. It's not. Good night, man. Take it easy. Again, thanks for stopping by, man. I appreciate it. I'm, uh, I'm always amazed anybody stops by to watch me just make marks on an iPad. But actually, that's uh, that may be a good place to stop because, as I had said earlier, and I don't know if anybody was actually here when I was talking about it, I am pretty wiped out today because I was out in the heat, and I don't like heat. So, um, yeah, was not... Uh, was not fun, but once in a while, work, well, I mean, for some people, work is never fun. But uh, in particular, if you have to work in the heat or something like that, uh, even minimally, I'll tell you, construction workers, man, I don't know how they do it. I guess you get used to it. I suppose it's like anything else, and you just get used to what it is, and then you don't really notice it, or you find ways to kind of offset it, but, oh, I am, I am not made for the heat. I overheat so quickly. So to be out in the sun was... Oh, did I do the pucker thing there? I did. Look at that. Yeah, I did. I forgot to fix this one. Well, we're going to fix that real quick. Which one is that one? That one. Okay. Yeah, I tried to do that pucker thing here. But I basically decided I wasn't doing that. So let's go ahead and do a fix on that really quick. Won't take long. What's interesting, because it still says there's one viewer, but Mike left, so I don't, yeah, I don't know how that counter works. I don't know if that counter is a fiction. Perhaps that counter does not accurately represent anything. It's an aspirational counter, which I guess tops out at one, which for me maybe is the aspiration as far as streaming goes. Just have one viewer and shut up and be thankful. Okay, I can do that. That's no problem. I can be appreciative of a single viewer. I'm appreciative of however many there are of you at this point. And if there are none, it doesn't matter because I'm still getting to doodle. So whatever. Okay, I don't... Oh, I did that there too. At least these are easy to fix. So I can just go in and fill them in and then we're done. Okay, there. Did I do it anywhere else? No. That was it. All right, at least that was that smart. Well, you know what, everybody? I think that I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I thought I might be done with this image in this stream, but I think it'll probably be the next one. I still have to fill in some of that and uh, do a couple other things. But honestly, I am I am pretty tired. So I think at this point, I will go ahead and wrap it up here because it is still hot. And I think I'll have no problems falling asleep tonight because I'm pretty tired. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my Be Right Back thing here. And... I will tell everybody what I generally say on these, which is wherever you are, whatever time it is for you, I hope you have a, oops, stop, there we go. I didn't hit stop on the stream, I'm still talking, so don't worry, I'm not going to vanish on you. I hope that you have a good rest of your insert time zone description here, whether that is morning, afternoon, evening, night, middle of the night, extraordinarily early morning, whatever it is. Have a good one. If you're in the heat like me, try to stay cool. Check in on people who may not have the ability to stay cool that you can because heat is no joke, man. It, it, is, it can literally be a killer. So if you, if you have people that you know don't necessarily have the best access to cooling, check in on them. And if you're one of those people, try to keep yourself cool. Hydrate yourself. Speaking as somebody who doesn't drink a lot of water, drink water when it's hot. If you're somewhere where it's frigidly cold, bundle up and stay warm and light a fire safely. Otherwise, have a wonderful Thursday or whatever day it is for you. And I will talk to you again on the next stream. Thanks for stopping by and watching. Good night or good morning or good day. Whatever it is, have a good one.